Good morning, everybody. It's good to see everyone. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Matthias, and I'm the worship guy around here. And one of the things we love to do is we love to worship Jesus, and we love to sing to him. So that's what we're going to do this morning before we do anything else. So let's stand and let's pray together. King Jesus, we just put all of our attention and our eyes towards you, knowing that you are the only one worthy of glory and worship right now. Jesus, hear our hearts as we sing to you and lift your name. We love you, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. like that in Jesus that no matter what we're going through in life, we can worship through it and know we're going to come out better on the other side of things because of who our Savior is. Amen. Well, hey, uh, so glad to have you guys here. Go ahead and have a seat. And uh, while you do that, uh, every year as we approach the end of the year, we love to just celebrate what God's doing here and has done around Kensington. So this video is going to kind of uh, just highlight and celebrate all the things that have been happening uh, this past year and all the ways that God's been moving. 
Psalm 65 verse 8 says, To those who live at the ends of the earth, stand in awe of your wonders. From where the sun rises to where it sets, you inspire shouts of joy. We are truly in awe of what God has done this year through you, the people of Kensington Church. From our local campuses, to surrounding neighborhoods, to locations across the globe, God has been on the move. Let's look back at just some of what God has done. Last Christmas, all our campuses celebrated the birth of Jesus and the fact that he is here with us. There was everything from a talking Christmas tree, singing carols together, experiencing the arrival of Jesus through imagery, and the Kensington tradition of lighting candles to remind ourselves of God's love for us. Back in March, people gathered on Good Friday to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross to reconcile us back to himself. And two days later, thousands more gathered to celebrate his resurrection and his love. Telling the story of Jesus is so important, especially to the next generation. Each week, our Kensington staff and hundreds of volunteers pour into our kids and our middle and high school students. In January, hundreds gathered at our Troy campus for the Next Gen Leader Vision Night to be encouraged and equipped in leading the next generation. Fun for kids and students? You bet. We held our annual wild retreat for middle and high school students. We were crazy enough to pull off another all-nighter called Takeover with our middle school students. We hosted a fun-filled Ignite 345 for our third through fifth graders, and we hosted Spring Hill Day Camps. Retreats are a great way to escape the routine of life and to connect with God. Along with the Wild Retreat, Spring Hill Camp opened its doors to Kensington for our annual Young Adults Rise Retreat, our Women's Retreat, and Man Camp. Great memories were made, laughs were shared, and connection to God restored. Let's look at how God moved uniquely at all of our campuses. Our Clarkston campus is celebrating the way God is using their newly established K Friends ministry for teens and adults with special needs. Let's look east to the Clinton Township campus. They are celebrating the 87 people who declared publicly their faith in Jesus by being baptized, with over 50% who were under the age of 30. Our Orion campus is celebrating a remarkable increase in their groups and courses, a 68% jump in participation, and groups are thriving. They have also started a new mentor program that is fostering multi-generational relationships in the church. Our Traverse City campus is celebrating their vibrant, family-oriented community and their old-fashioned potluck known as Mid-Eats. They also held a vacation Bible school this summer to spread the love of Jesus to many young people in the community. Our Birmingham campus is getting to know their community by hosting welcome lunches. It has been a chance to learn people's stories, how they came to Kensington and how they hope they can grow in their relationship with Jesus. Wednesdays have turned out to be a huge deal at the Troy campus. It's a night where the Troy community comes together to lean into one another and Jesus. Several mid-sized groups and courses are offered simultaneously, from finances and marriage to Bible basics and Alpha. One of our ways we care for one another in hard seasons is through our care and marriage initiatives. This year, we were able to walk alongside over a thousand people through Celebrate Recovery, grief and divorce workshops, marriage mentoring, and pastoral care. The church is not just one hour a week, it's all week. This is where our Move Out Network shines. Here are just a few of the countless ways they are being the church to our neighbors. A team of volunteers took high school students on a tour of historically black colleges and universities to give them a vision for the future. Three new teams launched focused on foster care. Our school partner team supported staff and students at our nine partner schools. And there are community gardens, food pantries, a team that fixes cars, a team that builds shelters for people experiencing homelessness, and so much more. God has opened the doors throughout Kensington's history to come alongside communities around the world. To date, we have long-term friendships in 10 different countries, including our newest partner, House of Joy, within the Navajo Nation of Arizona. We are partnering with Pastor JR to love the Navajo people by helping provide food storage, facility maintenance, and supporting his church as they bring the good news of Jesus to those on the reservation. This year, 264 new sponsorships began through our No Child Sponsorship Program. That means that in India, Nepal, and Kenya, there are 1,250 vulnerable children who feel seen, have access to food and education, and hearing the gospel. Kensington's Hope Water Ministry is still running strong and bringing clean water to the Pokot Tribe in Western Kenya. Through the Hope Water Gala in January and the 5K and Fun Run in June, we were able to fund seven new wells, potentially impacting over 7,000 people with healthy, life-transforming access to clean water. Kensington's longtime mission statement is to see everyone transformed and mobilized by Jesus. 
Did you know we witnessed this transformation? We did at every baptism. Each person who publicly proclaimed that Jesus had done a transforming work in their life was an example of our mission being lived out. I'm so amazed at all the wonderful things that God is doing in the life of this church, Kensington Church. As I watch that video and I see the people being baptized and coming out of the water, each one of those baptisms represents an individual person's story of life transformation. And it's so good to partner with you as we go after this mission to see everyone transformed and mobilized by Jesus. And you know what? It's happening. It's happening right now. It's been happening for 34 years in the life of this church. The Lord has had his favor upon this church and he still does. We're seeing it today. So thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your open-handedness. I'm so grateful for you that you are on mission with us. You know, in this season, I also reflect on the goodness of God. He's been so faithful to us. And we go out now and we just keep pursuing this mission to reach the one who is far from God, knowing that our good and faithful God is gonna go with us.
right. Our God is good all the time. All the time, he is so good. It is wonderful to be together with you. My name is Becca Mowry. And uh, we have a few things that we wanna highlight as we come out of that year and giving video, that video that just shows what God can do in one year. I feel like that is a word that God has put on my heart. He's like, look what I can do in one year. Our God is faithful, he is good, he is powerful, and he is moving. And so we would ask that as we approach this year end, that you would consider putting Kensington, after seeing that, putting Kensington on your year end giving list, a lot of people give to charitable donations at the end of the year, and we wanna be on the top of your list. If you have questions, if you wanna find out more about ministries and places and partners that we're involved in, we would love to connect with you. But hear me say this, thank you for partnering with us to see everyone transformed and mobilized by Jesus. Thank you for that partnership. Everything that you saw on that video is possible because you have partnered with us to be on mission. So thank you for that. In that video, you saw us talk about the Pokot people in Kenya and how we like to build wells to bring fresh water for communities. And so we host every year a gala called the Hope Water Gala. And this year it happens to be on February 14th. I know that you're like, that is a really long way away. I just have to get through this month. I just wanted to drop that date. You're gonna hear more about it in the coming weeks, but wanted to drop that date so you can reserve it. It's gonna be a wonderful night of, of food and dancing and a silent auction. So please keep that spot penciled in and reserved for you for the Hope Water Gala. There's lots of information online about it, but we'd love for you to keep that date reserved because it's gonna be a fantastic night. You know, we are coming up on our Advent season. Can I hear everybody say Advent? Yes, and we have two particular things that we want to invite you to, uh, encourage you to invite people to. The first one is our Orion Family Tree Lighting. This has become an annual event where we have dinner and we have a very short program. It's family focused, it's invitation focused, and we'll end the evening outside lighting the Christmas tree, singing carols together. The second event that we wanted to highlight, and we mentioned this over the last couple weeks as well, is our ladies, our women's Advent uh, brunch that's coming up on December 7th. And so both of these events you need to register for. Can I hear you say register? Yes, so our Advent events, these two Advent events, go online, register for these. They're both gonna be great events and very invitational events as well. Tomorrow is a special day. And as a Kensington staff, one of our staff values is honor. And so I wanted to take a moment as tomorrow is Veterans Day, and I wanted to honor our veterans in the room. So would you please stand so we can see who you are. Stand. Church, let's look around. We honor you. We thank you for your service. We thank you for saying yes. We thank you for what you've done and the sacrifices that you have made. We see you and we love you, we appreciate you, and we honor you today. And veterans, if you would like to connect into further community or you know other veterans who would like to connect into care, we have one of our special congregants here and leaders, his name is Patrick, and he's gonna be out at the hub and he's gonna be able to show you some ways uh, that you can connect into community with one another. But at this time, I'm just gonna encourage you, yes, to stand one more time and say hello to the people around you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. 
Well, it is so good to, to be with you, to be able to share from God's Word today. My name is Brian. I'm the senior pastor here at Kensington Church. And um, a few things before we dive into our sermon series for today. Uh, we're in this series called Supernatural, where we're looking at who the Holy Spirit is in our lives. What is it? What is the presence of God, and how can we know the presence of God? And so we'll jump into that in a moment, but I wanted to have just a family moment for a second here and share two things. One, I, I want to receive our offering, and the second thing I'd like to do is share a, a little update on our lead pastor search. Does that sound good? Sound okay? Wonderful. So I'm going to invite our ushers to come forward, and uh, we're going to collect our offering for today. If you are here for the first time, please, we're so thankful you're here. We love that you joined us today. Uh, feel no obligation to give. You can let the plates pass you, the, the, the baskets pass you. No one's going to give you a sideways look or anything. If they do, tell me, okay? And I will hunt them down, hunt them down. We are just so glad that you're here. There's lots of different ways to, to give and partner with us, as you can see on the screen and uh, for those of you who call Kensington your, your home church, I want to challenge you and encourage you to just prayerfully consider uh, regular giving. The, uh, the second thing that I want to share with you is an update on our lead pastor search. You know, Orient Campus, you have been blessed with two amazing lead pastors over the course of your history, Dave Wilson and Pastor Craig McGlasson. I mean, you guys have gotten the best, haven't you? You have. It's just been amazing. And so with that, what I'd like to say is, I think the Lord is going to bring somebody here who is amazing as well. Uh, and so we are looking for that person. And um, as I told you uh, about a month and a half ago, we've engaged a search organization that's helping us with this search. It's a group that's called Vanderblumen. Uh, that's the last name of the person who started it. Just It's not like a Greek word or Hebrew word or anything like that. It's just Vanderblumen. And they are one of the best at what they do in searching for candidates, uh, pastoral candidates, much like we're looking for right now. In fact, the person who's leading the search, his name is Tim, and Tim was the one who found me in Connecticut, and we went on a journey there, and now we're here. And so I have a lot of confidence in Tim. He has over 30 plus years of ministry experience, including uh, being a senior pastor himself, and so uh, we are in good hands with him. And so they are searching for, for people. We put a post together that is on the Vanderbloom and site. You can go check it out if you want. And if you're interested in the job, apply through them. Don't tell me. Apply through them. And, uh, and it's all there. We've created a video all about the Orient Campus. Uh, you can watch it just so you get a little taste of it. We had a call with Tim uh, about a week and a half ago, and he gave us an update, a very encouraging one. Uh, already, the, the post has only been out there for about three weeks. It already has received 700 impressions, which is fantastic. And over 70 people have already applied for the position. Isn't that great? Unle yeah, that's good news, right? Now, listen, I don't know if that's 70 duds, okay? Like, I don't know. I haven't looked at them all yet. Part of the job of Vanderbloom is now to go through all those candidates and to look at them and, um, and kind of take out the ones that it's not going to be a good fit. Maybe they don't have the experience we're looking for. And, uh, and so to really bring it down to a handful of people that Tim will eventually present to us uh, and then we'll engage in conversation with candidates. So I would say a, a timeline is one. We, we don't know when we'll have a, a lead pastor. We're going to do all the right things in order to find that person. What I do know is that over the next several weeks, Tim will continue to give us updates. I also know this, is that Christmas time and the holiday season can, can be busy for pastors. And so there's a, maybe a little bit of a, a slower move over these next couple months as we engage candidates just because of the busyness of church life uh, for the candidate. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, we're excited for Tim to, to bring a handful of people to us that he believes would be a great fit for the Lake Orion uh, campus. Another great thing about Tim is that he used to attend Kensington, and so he knows all about it. So I feel like we're in really good hands there. Uh, I told you about once a month we're going to give you an update just like this, and we will do that. Even if the update is the same, we'll share exactly where we are in the process. And here's why. Not just so that you get your information, so that you're in the know, but because we really want to be praying together in the specific spot of our transition. And so right now, the job posting is out there. People are applying, and we're praying 
uh, that uh, the Lord would just really be with that person that he has in mind for us. Sound good? If you ever have any questions along the way, um, Becca and I are here very frequently. Please stop us, talk to us, uh, Susan, uh, our staff, and we'd love to be able to try to answer any of your questions as best as we can as we travel through this, this season. But I am optimistic about what God is gonna do. And I'm so, I'm eager actually to see who the Lord brings uh, to us. Let me, um, let me transition now into our sermon for today. Uh, we are in this series called Supernatural. And you know what? I found myself this week being really grateful. And I have to confess that some days I don't feel grateful, so don't think that this is just always normal. But for some reason this week, I just felt a lot of gratefulness in my heart. And I was thinking about our church and our church family. Beck and I and our kids, we've been here now over a year. We're really feeling like a part of the family here. So thank you for that. And, and it, I was just feeling just grateful for that as we make friends, as we put roots down deep. I was just really thankful for that. I was really thankful for just the amazing things that God is doing in our midst. You know, today at this service, we're gonna have 26 people get baptized. That's 26 lives who have been changed by Jesus. And this is amazing. Like, God is moving in the life of his church and his people. I'm so grateful for that. I also found myself just being really grateful for my kids this week. I got a text from my oldest who's at college, and uh, she saw some kind of social media reel that somebody put out there of me on Kensington's social media, and, and, and she texted me. She said, hey, Papa, I saw, I don't know the lingo they use, but I saw your reel or whatever it was, and you did a great job. Keep up the good work. And I, I almost burst out into tears when I saw it. I was like, oh my gosh, my daughter thinks I'm doing a good job. I don't care about any of you. Like, <laughs> this is amazing. Like, wow. So this just warmed my heart. I was grateful for my kids. And I was just going through each of them and just thanking the Lord for my kids. And, um, you know, I was thinking about it as a father and as a parent. What you want to do is, like, give your kids the best, don't you? Those of you who are parents in the room, you just want to do everything you can to give your kids the very best, and, and I, don't, I don't think I've always, you know, hit a home run on that. I wouldn't say that, but there was one moment where I know I hit a home run. It was Christmas several years ago. We were still living in Connecticut. We had a little farm with a bunch of rescue animals and things like this, and it was Christmas, and we got the girls a puppy. Yes, and this puppy was so cute and adorable. Yes. How, how wouldn't you want like 10 of those, right? And we got this puppy and we brought it and on just Christmas we told them about it and they were so excited and their faces were lit up and we named him Bear, right? Because this little puppy, he grew to be 150 pounds. Yes. I have another, I, I didn't bring the other picture, but he's like the size of a picnic table. I mean, this is a dog, okay? And uh, he was an outdoor dog. He never stepped foot in my house. He lived outside because he was a dog, okay? Like, he was a real dog. Like, I, like, some of you have your dog with you today. No, this was like a dog dog, living outside kind of dog, and he was awesome. And, um, but I just remember, like, just giving my kids this just amazing gift. And as I thought about that, I thought, wow, you know what? I have a heavenly father. You have a heavenly father. And he wants to give you the greatest gift, and that's what we're talking about in this series. He wants to give you the best gift. You know, as you get older, what you learn is that actually a person's presence can be the greatest gift. When you're younger, when people come over, you're looking at what they brought. Like, did they bring me at Christmas? Did they bring me a bag? Is it wrapped? How big is the present? As you get older, it's the person's presence that matters the most. Do you agree with that, some of you? Yeah, more of you should agree with that. <laughs> A person's presence. Like, isn't it amazing when, when unexpected to you, somebody shows up who you love? It's like a, it's a, oh, a couple of people don't like that. Okay. <laughs> a couple of people are like, no, it's so terrible. Okay. <laughs> How about when you are expecting it and they show up? It's just their presence means so much. And, and this is what the Lord does for us. He gives us the greatest gift that, did you know that our, our God wants to give you the gift of his presence? Yeah, that he, he wants to walk with you and speak with you and encourage you and guide you and transform you. He, 
He wants to reveal his great love for you and his, his grace and his mercy in your life. This is our God. He, he doesn't want to just be far off in heaven, but actually he's gone to every length in order to be close to you. And this is the good news of the gospel. Today's message I'm entitling The Power of Presence. The Power of Presence. And I want to share the story of God's presence from the beginning of time all the way until now. I'm going to tell you the story of God's presence because here's the truth is that God has always been faithful with his presence. Always been faithful with his presence. Our passage today comes out of Joel. Uh, Joel was a prophet in the Old Testament. And in Joel 2, verse 28, this is the passage. It's very short. And remember, a prophet is speaking for God to the community. And so God is saying this through Joel. And this is the passage. I will pour out my spirit on all people. That's the reading for today. That, I believe, is one of the most important scripture verses in all of the Bible. I will pour out my spirit on all people. And I want to tell you the story of the presence of God for us to understand why that is one of the most important passages in all of Scripture. And so let's talk about where it all began. The story of the presence of God starts in the very beginning. As we read in, in, in Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, we see the Holy Spirit there. God has been and always will be. And the same is true of his spirit, his presence. It, it always has been, it always will be. And we see it in the first chapter of Genesis where it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And catch this, and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So in the very beginning, we see the spirit there. They're creating and bringing order out of chaos. Did you catch that? That the, the earth was formless. It was dark. It wasn't fully formed yet. And here is the Spirit of God hovering over the waters, a part of the creation story, bringing order out of chaos. And I want to stop here because there's a lesson for us in, in, in who the Holy Spirit is, is that the Holy Spirit, the presence of God in your life, brings order out of chaos. This is what God does through his wisdom through his presence, through his grace and mercy, through his guidance and through his direction, the presence of God brings order out of chaos. And maybe today you come into the room and life is a bit messy. You're looking for where to go. You're looking for, for guidance. How do I help heal this relationship? How do I get my life on track? How do I overcome this addiction? Life is messy right now. Well, I want to encourage you to turn to, to the God who wants to give you the gift of his presence and the presence of God through his Holy Spirit brings order out of chaos. But the story of the Holy Spirit and the presence of God continues on, not just at creation of the earth, but his presence was there in the creation of humanity. In, in chapter 2 of Genesis, it goes on, and, and when God created humankind, it says this, he formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Notice that as God is creating humans, that actually they're not really alive until he breathes his breath into them. This word breath is the word in Hebrew, ruach, and the word ruach is also used for Spirit. And so when we see the word Holy Spirit in our scriptures, it's this word ruach, which means the breath of God. And so here what we learn about the presence of God is this, is that we're not truly alive to the things of the Lord until we receive the breath of God in our lives, the gift of his spirit that lives within us and with us. And the story continues as God creates Adam and Eve and he, he breathes life into them. It's through his presence that they are fully alive. 
you might be walking this planet not feeling fully alive, like you're missing something. And I want to propose to you maybe what you're missing is the presence of God in your life, his, his spirit living within you. You might have all the things that life has to offer, but you might still be missing the goodness of his presence in your life. And so God creates Adam and Eve. He breathes life in them. And then he, he walks with them in the garden in this perfect sense. There's this wonderful fellowship with God and, and Adam and Eve. But then a serpent comes, the evil one comes and, and whispers into Adam and Eve's ears and says, did God really say this? Did he really say don't eat from the tree of the good of, of, of evil and knowledge? Did, did the Lord really say that? And then, and then he kind of convinces them, well, actually, if you do eat from that, you'll become God. You should do that. And, and here, Adam and Eve, they declare their independence and they do the one thing that God asked them not to do. Have you ever done that? Hey, just don't touch that. I really want to touch that. Hey, don't, you shouldn't go there. Mm, now I really want to check it out. Have you ever done that in your life where you did the one thing you knew you weren't supposed to do? Has anybody done that? Okay, well, the, the rest of you perfect people just float off into heaven right now. Show us your wings. We want to see them. Give me a break, right? We all do this. It's part of our human condition, and this is what Adam and Eve do. Is they, their brokenness enters the relationship with the Lord. But as you continue on in the story of the presence of God, look what happens. In this moment, God could have said, you know what? You blew it. You did the one thing I told you not to do. So good luck. But instead, Adam and Eve, there they are. For the first time, they're, they're ashamed of their nakedness. And God comes and, and he calls out to them. He says, where are you? Now, this wasn't a proximity question. This wasn't a location question. The, the Lord's very good at hide and seek. He's a wonderful seeker. He will find you. But what it was was a relationship question. Where are you with me right now? Where have you placed your heart with me? And then I love what happens next. Once God finds them, he doesn't condemn them. He's probably disappointed, yes. But look what he does. In Genesis 3, it says this, And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. He became their tailor. He's like, listen, I, I know you've messed up, but I'm not going to abandon you now. What this teaches me about the presence of God is this, is that the presence of God doesn't leave us when we fail. Man, we'd, we'd all be out, wouldn't we? But actually, the presence of God, he, he's with us and wants to be with us and near us even when we fail him. And maybe you come into this room and, and you know you've disappointed the Lord. You, you know that there's been some failure in your life. I want you to hear right now that that does not count you out from the goodness of God in your life. You haven't missed it. <laughs> We were on a cruise one time, and like people missed the boat, and they're like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, and the boat doesn't turn back around, right? Has anybody been left on a dock? No, don't show your hands. <laughs> and we just kind of sit there, like kind of laughing a little bit. But anyway, it's like, that's not God. He turns around. <laughs> he meets you where you are. You're not counted out. I often say to people that failure is an event. It's not an identity. It's not who you are. In fact, what the Lord wants to do is he wants to forgive you of that failure, of that misstep, and welcome you back home. This is who he is. The, the, the presence, the story of the presence of God continues, and, and now we see after Adam and Eve, the Lord just really being present with his people throughout the Old Testament. We see, see stories of Abraham and how God was with Abraham. He spoke to Abraham. He even showed his presence to Abraham. We see the story of Isaac, and we see the story of Jacob, and we see how the Lord was with them. God even wrestled with Jacob, was very present with him, and then blessed him and, and used him in great ways. We see the story of, of, of Joseph and how the Lord spoke to Joseph through dreams. He was able to interpret dreams. Now we see the story of Moses and how the Lord was clearly with Moses. It wasn't Moses who parted the Red Sea. 
No, it was the God who was with him. It was the power of God in his life. We see stories of Joshua, how Joshua brought the people into the promised land and the presence of the Lord constantly went before Joshua. And we see many other people throughout the Old Testament who were blessed by the presence of God. Stories of Gideon and Samson, stories of Deborah and Miriam, stories of Saul and David, just countless people who God just made his presence known to. And then he brought breakthrough in their lives. The story of the presence of God is really the story of breakthrough. You look at all these different people's lives and how the Lord brought breakthrough in their life. For Moses, he brought breakthrough. For Abraham, he brought breakthrough. For Deborah, for Miriam, for all these people, he brought breakthrough in their lives. Samson, who was literally bound up, it was through the Holy Spirit that breakthrough came. And and I want to pause here and just say, man, when we experience the presence of God and know the presence of God in our life, it brings breakthrough. And maybe there are many of you who come into this room today who need breakthrough. Man, there's this thing that's just, it's bound me up. And I need breakthrough. Maybe you need breakthrough in direction. You're just not quite sure what your next step should be in life. I'm going to tell you, it's the Spirit, it's the presence of God that brings breakthrough in direction. Maybe you come into the room today and and there's broken relationship. Maybe it's with a spouse or a loved one, a friend or a a son or a, a daughter, and you just, you need the presence of God to come and bring breakthrough in that relationship. Maybe you need breakthrough from anger or bitterness it's like, man, this anger, it's, it's controlling me. The presence of God is the one that will bring peace into your life. Or maybe you need breakthrough from an addiction, a hurt, a hang-up, a, a habit that's in your life that you just can't overcome by yourself. Maybe you've even tried your hardest. But you need the presence of God to come and bring breakthrough. Maybe there's a hurt in your life. Or, or maybe you need breakthrough in, in your purpose or your identity. Or you're just, who am I? It's from the presence of God that breakthrough comes. As we follow the story of the presence of God, we see that the the presence of God makes a home among the people of God. And that happens through the tabernacle and the temple. And we see the tabernacle being constructed in the 1400s. This is while the Israelites are wandering in the wilderness. And it was a tabernacle because they were able to pack it up, bring it with them, and then pull it out again. And there's this man named Bezalel who was a great artist. And the Lord anointed him with his spirit to construct the tabernacle. And then later on, Solomon built the temple in Jerusalem. And this was in 960 BC, approximately. And now in this way of life, God made his home with his people, but it was limited. It was close, but it wasn't really close. That actually the presence of God was in the temple, the physical temple, the square footage of the temple. And some people could come close, but not all the way in. In fact, there was this curtain that separated people from the Holy of Holies where the presence of God was. But still, God was faithful with his presence. But then the prophets came on the scene, and God began to speak through them. Prophets are simply just people who would speak for God, be the mouthpiece of God. And they began to talk about this promise that was going to come, that actually the Lord is going to make a new home within his people that wasn't going to be limited, wasn't going to be this square footage situation, but God was going to do something new. Come all the way back to the prophet Joel, where God speaks to Joel and Joel says, hey, the Lord's going to do a new thing. Here's his promise. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Now can you begin to see the significance of this? Because in this moment, God's presence was confined to a location in the Holy of Holies. And now all of a sudden, Joel says, you know what? The Holy Spirit, the presence of God is going to make his home in a brand new way. Because God will pour out his spirit on all people. I, God, God's about to make a promise here. I will. It's his promise. When God makes a promise, you can guarantee it. I will pour out. He's not just going to kind of give you a tiny little bit, just a kind of teasing. You know, he wants to actually flood you with his presence. I will pour out my spirit. It's the spirit of the Lord that's his gift to you. 
we don't have to be spooked out or stressed out or worried about his Holy Spirit because if we believe that God is good, then the Spirit of God is good within us. I will pour out my Spirit for who? On all people. That any person who believes, any person who gives their life to the Lord, they will experience the presence of God. This was revolutionary. Fast forward 150 years. Now we're in 700 700 BC, and the prophet Isaiah comes on the scene. And Isaiah says this, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. What the prophet Isaiah is saying here is, yes, this promise that Joel spoke about, it's going to come. And it's going to come through a Messiah, God, come down as one of us. And guess what? He's going to be born of a virgin. And they're going to call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And some 700 years before Jesus was born, this word was given that a new day is coming in the presence of God where God is actually going to physically walk in your midst, but then he's going to do something so special for you. And as we celebrate in Christmas, God came. His name is Jesus, and he walked among us. He lived. In fact, John the Baptist, who prepared the way for Jesus, said this about Jesus. He said, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. See, part of the reason that God came, Jesus in human flesh, was yes, to show us the way to live, yes, to go to the cross and die for our sins, but also to give us the gift of his Spirit. And so Jesus lived, and then he died. And at his death, two important things happened. First, everything went dark. And second, the curtain in the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. Are you beginning to see the significance of this? I love how it was torn from the top to the bottom. That means some ordinary person couldn't have gone in there and just ripped it from the bottom to the top. But this was God doing it. He ripped the the curtain from the top to the bottom. And what this meant was that the Lord, through the death and resurrection of Jesus, was making his presence available, not just in that physical location of the temple, but now a new home was given to the Holy Spirit, that we are the temple of Christ Jesus, and he lives with us. It was an unleashing of the Spirit upon his people. The proximity of the Holy Spirit and the presence of God just got so much closer because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Our sins are forgiven, and now we can be given the gift of the Spirit. And so Jesus, he died, but then three days later, he rose from the dead. He appeared to lots of people, like hundreds, maybe thousands of people. And he told his disciples, hey, listen, I'm going to ascend. I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And by the way, it is going to be a wonderful place. I'm going to prepare a place, but but stay here until you receive the promised gift. What is the promised gift? It's the one Joel talked about. I will pour out my spirit on all people. And so Jesus ascends into heaven, and 10 days later, the day of Pentecost comes. This is the day where the Holy Spirit is given to his people, and the people are blessed with the presence of the Lord in their life. And you can read it in the book of Acts chapter two. What I wanna say to you, friends, is this. This is the story of the presence of God. And the day that we live in right now, after Jesus died and rose from the dead and has given the gift of his spirit, the day we live in is we live in the day where the presence of God is available for us now, now, that you can can come and know the presence of God in your life. Let me just close with a story. Many of you know one of the founding pastors here is a guy named Dave Wilson. And uh, Beck and I have really enjoyed getting to know Dave and Ann Wilson. And um, Dave, as many of you might know as well, he was the Lions football chaplain for over 20 years. And I love it. He always jokes that he's the losingest 
chaplain in NFL history. I love that. If that hurt, I'm sorry. Days are better now, so it shouldn't hurt, right? But he would joke about that. And so he's still connected into the NFL world, and, and we've become friends. And, and one day I got a text from Dave, and it said, hey, do you want to do the Tampa Bay Buccaneers chapel service with me? And I responded, absolutely. You know, I, I, I did take a moment just because I was like, I feel like I should be loyal to the Lions. Like, what are my good prayers going to do? It could push them over the edge. Anyway, I battled with that, but then I'm like, yes, I want to go. And so Dave's like, all right, meet me at this hotel and, and we'll do the chapel service. And at this point, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just going as like a buddy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for Dave. I'm going to, you know, kind of stay in the back and all this kind of stuff, keeping my expectations low. And so I get there. I meet Dave in the lobby and we kind of hang out. And, and he said, you know, the reason why I got the invitation to do this is because I've, I've become pretty close friends with the quarterback. His name is Baker Mayfield. I'm like, wow. And I know all the sports people. So I'm just like, wow, that's amazing. And he could tell I was excited about this. And so Dave looked at me, he says, do you want to meet him? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I want to meet him. So he says, Dave's like, okay, come with me, come with me. And, he's, and, and he come, and, and there's this black curtain that, that, that's kind of like hiding where all the players were. And Dave goes up to the curtain and there's, he kind of, he opens it for me, he's like, Right? And he takes me and he leads me in. And all the, all the personnel and coaches and players are back. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, don't say anything stupid, Brian. Be cool. And then he introduced me to Baker Mayfield and we had this conversation. It was amazing. Afterwards, Dave spoke and I just got to see him like in his sweet spot. It was just such a privilege. And then I called Becca. I was like, Becca, you're never going to guess who I just hung out with. And I was right. She would have never guessed. She doesn't know a single player on the whole team, okay? She's like, I don't know, Tom Brady? I'm like, no, he retired again. He's, he's out. But here's the thing. For too many of us, I think, we live our spiritual lives on the outside of the curtain. When actually the Lord's saying, you know what? I've got way more for you. I want you to know my presence I want you to experience my love and my grace in a, in, a, in a whole new way. And so all I want to do today is I just want to ask you a, a simple question because his invitation is for you to know him. And I guess like Dave asked me, my question for you would be is this. Do you want to meet him? Do you want to meet him? Come, then, then come with me. Come be behind the curtain. It's been torn in two. You, you've been given access, permission, an invitation to come and know the presence of God. And I'm just so grateful. I'm just so grateful that my God did this for me. And he did it for you. And in just a moment, we're going to see 26 people get baptized. And each one of them is saying, I know him. I know this Jesus and I want you just to see that, that I know this Jesus and I, and I want to follow him as best I can. I don't just know about him, but, but I know him in my life. I know his presence. And so I'm going to pray and, and then we're going to get ready for baptism. You're going to hear a couple of the testimonies. And then, and then friends, really, we're going to enter a party. That's what's going to happen. Is we're just going to celebrate all that God has done in each of our friends' lives. So let's, let's pause and pray. Lord, we thank you that you move in our lives, that you're present with us. We thank you for each person who's going to get baptized. And as we just sing right now, Lord, this, this song about your Holy Spirit, Lord, this is our, our song where we get to ask for you to come. Ask you to come into our lives. Be present in our lives. You've made the invitation. And now, Lord, through this song, we just want to say back to you, Lord, come. Come into my life. And so, Lord, we thank you and we love you precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Why don't we stand together as we sing this song? Your prayer. 
have tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence
invite you to, to take a seat for a moment. And as you're doing that, I'm going to invite Violet and Ruby and Kim and James to come up with me. And we're just going to hear a few of our, our friends' stories before we go into the water. And so uh, I want you to listen in uh, to all that the Lord is doing. And so, um, yeah, we'll go in this order. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> all right, friends, let's welcome Kim. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to share a little bit of my spiritual journey, just a short snippet. Get really close, Kim. All right. There you go. Before accepting Christ as my Savior, I was a believer and an on and off, on, on and off again churchgoer. Then approximately six years ago, I started to attend here at Kensington, and I immediately loved it here. After be, after, and began and began coming regularly. I was at that time, recently retired, and was looking for a way to give my time back to help others. I soon found the K Friends group, special needs group, and quickly found myself totally loving their special people. One thing led to another, and. Now I lead this special group. <laughs> I totally believe this was meant to be. And during this time, I strongly felt the calling to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior, and I did. So today I want to declare to this church and to the whole world that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Because Jesus has saved me and I have submitted to him in obedience as my Lord, I am publicly, publicly confessing the truth through being baptized. Thank you, Jesus. Sunday. I wanted to get baptized because I was listening to the service um, a couple weeks ago with my mom and dad. I couldn't go into breakaway because they were on retreat. So I went into the service with my mom and dad. And the pastor said, it was, why was it, how was it like important to be baptized? And Jesus called us to get baptized. The service was almost over. I was, and I was listening to the last song. The room got quiet and dark. There was a bright light on the head singer and the lights were moving around. And I felt like God was with me and showed me that the world is amazing. And I'm dedicated to God and want to make a public decision about how I love and want to worship him for the rest of my life. Hi, my name is Ruby. This is my sister, Lily, and my two brothers, Hunter and Braylon. Through this past year, God has moved through all of us in different ways and given us so many opportunities in our lives. Although we all have our own relationship with God, he has brought us together on a deeper level, which is why we wanna do this public commitment to God as in baptism together. We have all decided that we are ready to declare our faith with him and let the Lord take control of our lives. I'd like to share something on behalf of me and my whole family here. I got my two daughters, my wife, and my my mom. Some there you go. Bring them to me. That's what I heard. And I submit to you today that they have actually brought me closer to him. So with a rededication and a dedication, we're gonna get it done. Uh, 
Um, I wasn't going to share anything, but I think it was Susan that said, hey, if it's on your heart, you need to say it. So um, today's message today talked about order and chaos. And let me tell you, my life is chaos. My family was chaos. Every way possible that you could think of, it was chaos. And my two daughters, Savannah and Brooke, Savannah's got a love for God that's crazy. It's amazing. At church every day, listening to, buy, to songs on the, on the radio that are Christian, that I'm like, wow, these are really cool, you know? <laughs> and just all these little gold nuggets of her going to Bible studies and things has been truly amazing. And my daughter, Brooke, who, when you've got something going on, she can recite a Bible verse. And I'm just hearing all these seeds from God, you know, these amazing seeds from God. And then Brooke's like, I want to get baptized. And it really made me look at my own life and say, you know what? I need to redo my whole life, start fresh, recommit, declare my love for God in front of everybody. Here are my accountability partners today. <laughs> so I, I thank my daughters uh, for really being the leaders and getting us back on track. And I thank you to God above as well. So. <laughs> Awesome. Well, friends, we're going to go into the, to the water now. And uh, here's what I'd, I'd ask of you. The band, they're going to play and lead us in some song. But as people go under the water and come out, I'd love for them to come out to like just crazy noise. Okay. Like I know some of your church experience might be like uh, golf clap, not here at Kensington. Okay. Like we get real loud. Uh, and this is going to be the most exciting thing today for you. So um, let's get going.
struggled with my mental health for the past three years and my family has helped me through it. This past year, um, my mom recommended that I should just go to church because it is something that I was passionate about, but I never could really express it, if you know what I mean. Um, and 
And I grew up in a house that wasn't necessarily a Christian household. Um, my family doesn't believe in God, but yet they still came here today to support me. Like, and that shows how much I love you guys. <laughs> and genuinely, the fact that I can just share this experience with them and they can see me come out of my shell and be passionate about something is truly what I love about God. And he brings the best in, like he brings out the best in me no matter what. And I'll love him and my family no matter what. Amen, amen. Well, why don't we stand together, friends? Thank you for uh, sticking around the whole time. Normally our services are about 60 to 70 minutes, but wasn't this exciting? It was so exciting. Well, friends, go knowing that you are the church. Go empowered by the Spirit of God. If you have questions, please go check out the hub. If you'd value prayer today, we have our prayer team up front, but have a wonderful rest of your day. one family of six, four siblings, and a whole lot of incredible stories. So we are so thankful to be a part of this with you. We're so grateful for the work that God's doing in the lives of our families and people sitting in the seats. Um, just a beautiful service. Thanks again for joining us. Be well.